In this module, we'll talk about GABA, which stands for gamma amino butyric acid. GABA's structure is shown here. It has a butyrate and an amine functional group. And GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. It's also a key target of pharmacotherapies in the treatment of anxiety and insomnia. So we'll explore how GABA works in this short tutorial. The biosynthesis of GABA is shown here. Glutamine is the precursor. It is used to generate glutamate, and then glutamate is converted to GABA. GABA enters the presynaptic storage vesicle via a transporter, and it's stored there until an action potential triggers its release. So once it's in the synaptic cleft, then it can bind to its receptors. And there are two types of GABA receptors. The major type is an ion channel. It's a chloride channel, which is shown on the, on the left. That allows chloride ions to flow into the cell. The other type of receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. We're not really going to explore uh, that type, the GABA B receptor. Its medical relevance is relatively insignificant compared to the GABA A receptor, which is the chloride channel. So when chloride flows into the cell, this relaxes the postsynaptic cell. It's an inhibitory event. It prevents further activation of that cell. So the drugs that interact with GABA receptors are typically allosteric modulators. They don't bind to the same site as GABA does, but they bind to a different site. And by doing so, they enhance the effect of GABA. They increase the frequency of the opening of the channel and the affinity of that receptor for GABA. Benzodiazepines, alcohol, barbiturates, anesthetics or anticonvulsants, these are allosteric modulators that produce sedative, anxiolytic, or muscle relaxant effects depending on the drug. A variety of phytochemicals from plants have been studied in models of the GABA receptor. Magnolol and honokiol are phenolic compounds from the magnolia tree. Valerian root, chamomile, and passionflower extracts have a long history of use for uh, anxiety and uh, supporting sleep onset. Those extracts contain phytochemicals that can also support the activity of the GABA-A receptor. One of the most common questions that I've received over the years from medical professionals is whether orally administered GABA crosses the blood-brain barrier. In case you're not aware of exactly what this means, this is a barrier that consists of extra cell layers that are around the capillary walls of the vessels in the brain. These astrocyte feet, which are shown in purple, create an additional barrier that makes it hard for some substances to cross into the brain tissue from those blood vessels. So for several decades, it's been assumed uh, that GABA can't get across this barrier. We're still not sure whether GABA really gets across the blood-brain barrier in therapeutically significant amounts. To date, there are no definitive human data that show GABA's blood-brain barrier permeability, but several studies have shown that reductions in stress markers and, and stress measurements in patients receiving oral GABA uh, have been significant. It's also been proposed that GABA may act locally in the enteric nervous system in the gut and may affect the brain indirectly through the vagus nerve or the gut-brain axis. So that's another interesting hypothesis that might explain why GABA is effective but might not get into the brain itself in sufficient quantities to explain its therapeutic efficacy. So to quickly review, GABA is made from glutamate. A variety of drugs act as allosteric modulators of GABA-A receptors. There have been natural products that have shown efficacy in binding to GABA-A receptors and supporting the entry of chloride ions. Whether GABA crosses the blood-brain barrier is uncertain, but there is data that shows that orally administered GABA is effective for reducing measurements of stress and anxiety in human volunteers. So now you know the basics of GABAergic neurotransmission and the various points in which therapeutic substances may enhance its signaling.